I suppose my first memory is buying a hockey stick. I'd never seen hockey or heard anything about hockey. And a boy named Alexander Hunter told me, we've well, got to have a hockey stick if you're going to be around here. And I've got one I'll sell you for 35 cents. Look at the curve on it. Look at the way it whips in here. I had the foggiest notion of what hockey was, but if I had to have a hockey stick to be here, I went and asked my dad for 35 cents to buy a hockey stick. And that's really the first thing I can remember about my introduction to Niagara and Niagara sports. Well, if you lived in Niagara in those days, you played hockey or you didn't do anything. Of course, we had a, the, the rink was out on the commons. Or the, we had an outdoor rink on the commons, which was flooded every year, and uh, you had to wait until the weather was cold enough. There were boards around the rink. You, you simply put up a, a built a, and closed the rink in boards, strung some electric lights over the top of it, and there was the rink. There was a little shack with a wood stove in it where the teams could change and where as many spectators as possible could crowd in and get warm in between periods. On the nights when the town team wasn't playing somebody or when some of the kids' teams weren't playing, we had public skating. And the only entertainment in the wintertime, really, was to go out skating. You'd skate arm in arm with your girlfriend of the night around the rink on the thing. That was, uh, that was your entertainment of the evening. To get into the hockey games, the town team played teams like Port Toulouse and Port Weller and played the regular small league. And admission was 25 cents. Well, you haven't seen a hockey game until you stood out there on the commons, out on that windswept commons with the wind whistling along there. In between a snow bank, you, they shoveled the snow away from the boards, and you stood in a little trench alongside the boards. And you haven't watched a hockey game and really rooted for a team until you stood out there with a temperature around 10 degrees and a wind whipping across. You could save the 25 cents admission in one of two ways. You could volunteer to scrape the, the ice in between periods and they'd let you in for nothing so you uh, came out between periods took a snow shovel and scraped the snow off the ice or you could be the town crier and take a bell a big old dinner bell and walk through the streets of the town in advance of the game that night around 6 o'clock at night ringing the bell and yelling hockey tonight hockey tonight Niagara plays Port Weller hockey tonight <laughs> and then that would earn you your 25 cents admission to the games oh that was I, I much preferred that to sweeping the snow off the ice that was uh, I, I think probably my I, I eventually wound up as being a radio announcer and maybe that was my early training really didn't have overflow crowds at the games which is quite understandable some of the parents of the team would come out, but uh, they did very well to, to pick up a few dollars at the gate. One of the, uh, the highlights of the game to me was to watch Red Campbell, who was one of the stars of the team. The lighting was not all that could be desired, certainly not compared to what they have nowadays in the indoor arenas. We had a string of lights, bulbs, just, just big bulbs, strung across the rink. And Red Campbell's favorite maneuver was to take the puck toward his own end of the rink, skate up toward center ice, and then loft the puck high in the air above the lights so that if the poor goalie at the other end and the foggiest notion where this thing was coming from out of this dark sky above the lights. <laughs> it's a maneuver that wouldn't work these days. <laughs>